FBLA PBL members, my name is Kimberly Clark and I'm serving as the 2017-2018 National President for Phi Beta Lambda and I'm from the great state of Missouri. Mark Twain once said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sail, explore, dream, discover. We're so excited to kick off this new interview series with alumni and members of the association to share how they too were not afraid of their future and dove right into their promising careers. Hopefully through watching these interview series, you too can have some tips and be inspired to pursue your biggest dream and whatever lies ahead of you in the future. Today we are excited to have with us Chris Zurich. Chris served as a national officer in FBLA, state officer in PBL, and is currently serving as the Missouri FBLA PBL State Advisor. In his spare time, Chris likes to steer members as they embark upon the leadership of FBLA PBL. Thank you again for agreeing to spend your morning with us, Chris. Oh, not a problem. I'm happy to be here. Perfect. So we'll just go ahead and get started with all of the burning questions that your biggest fans want you to answer. <laughs> The first one I have for you is, what was your FBLA experience like? And how did it motivate you to continue your journey into PBL? Certainly. So I joined FBLA as a freshman, and my chapter was one that was uh, rather small in a rural community. Um, community only had 188 members. Um, so our chapter only had you know 40 or 50 members in total serving the entire school district. Um, so growing up in a small chapter certainly brings you closer together um, in terms of membership. And I was also provided a lot of different opportunities because of that small chapter and that camaraderie that we had amongst each other. Um, so in my FBLA experience, I was provided the opportunity to serve in various leadership roles at the local level, um, even moving on to our district level in Missouri as a sophomore uh, before advancing on into competitions at the state and national level. Um, one of my favorite memories is actually a Kind of interesting to say favorite but i actually ran for state president in missouri my junior year uh, and i did not uh, win that position nor did i even make it to the voting round for that position actually um, and that really motivated me a lot to continue on in the association um, because i learned a lot about myself from the experience of campaigning for an office and then not winning that office and i ended up pursuing national office after that and was named uh, north central region vice president for fbla for 2010-11 um, so all in all, my FBLA experience was uh, absolutely amazing. I loved all the opportunities that I got. I loved getting to meet members and travel the country as a national officer. Uh, but I think most important, I learned a lot about myself. And I think that's what I'll always cherish from my FBLA experience is, is finding myself and my passion and my career through the association. How did your FBLA experience inspire you to join PBL? So I absolutely just adored everything about FBLA from the moment I joined. Um, so there was no way that I was going to let that um, go. And I remember even as a senior, as I was looking at um, colleges, every time I would look at a college, I would look to see if they had a PBL chapter because it meant a lot to me to continue on my journey and to give back to the association that gave me so much. Uh, and when I ended up selecting a college, I actually ended up emailing the person who got elected president for what would be my freshman year of college um, to find out every opportunity to get involved uh, in PBL. So there was there was certainly no way that I was going to give up uh, my FBLA PBL experience. And I'm certainly glad that I spent my college career as a member of PBL. What would you tell high school students who've been incredibly involved in FBLA and are not sure they would have anything to gain by joining PBL once they got to college? So PBL is a lot similar, but also a lot different than FBLA. I think one of my favorite things about PBL that was different was that we got to do a lot more of the um, the planning and creation of our activities and our conferences. Um, and because it was a smaller group of individuals in PBL, I got to meet a lot more people along the way and build some really strong bonds and friendships. So know that, yes, FBLA is enormous, uh, and PBL isn't so big, but I think honestly, that's probably one of its greatest strengths is that there is a lot more opportunity for you to shine and you to shine as an individual in PBL and you can gain event planning skills. Uh, you can uh, gain, you know, lots of skills when it comes to planning a conference and traveling. There's lots of, you know, details that 
as an FBLA member, you don't really know about because your advisor does a lot of it. And that's very different in college where you get a lot of the control over what you do and how you do it. So I promise there are a million skills that you can still gain um, in PBL. And a lot of our most successful chapters in Missouri are full of people who aren't just business majors. Uh, we have students interested in health, interested in education, uh, interested in agriculture, interested in science. It doesn't matter. We have events for everybody. And I think it's really let PBL shine. So if you are an FBLA and you don't know why you want to join PBL, I promise if you give it a shot, you will understand that that it is just as valuable as FBLA, if not more. What were some of your highlight experiences from PBL that you that weren't available to you or you didn't pursue as an FBLA member, but uh, you had as a PBL member? So coming from a small chapter, I didn't have a whole lot of opportunity to attend national level conferences just because of, of the cost and getting to them. Um, but when it came to PBL, um, there was a lot more funding available through a university. Uh, and that was really, really helpful in us getting to conferences. So outside of when I served as a national officer, I had never been to an NFLC. Uh, and I went to every NFLC during the PBL experience because it was more affordable to do as a college student with the things uh, or with the support of my university. Um, so highlight wise, I think the NFLCs were fantastic um, to get to go to as a PBL member and have those really focused tracks that were based on a career um, available as well as the state officer tracks where I served as a state officer. So I would say as probably my number one highlight would be the NFLCs. Uh, but after that, I think it would be getting to know the national officers. Uh, in the high school division with FBLA, there's so many members to only nine national officers. Um, but because the collegiate level is a little smaller, you can really get to bond and interact with the national officers and get to know them really well. And I think that helped strengthen our chapter and strengthen Missouri as a whole was building those really strong connections with our national officers in PBL. So those are two highlights that I think really note a difference between FBLA and PBL, but really highlight why PBL provides a lot of new opportunities to members. So how has FBLA PBL impacted or changed your life? I think it gave me a career path and I think it gave me one that I didn't necessarily realize at the very beginning. So when I, you know, got into high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do as many people don't and even so getting into college, not really knowing what I wanted to do. And through FBLA, I really found that I got to try out a lot of different fields of business. Um, from graphic design to marketing to management to finance. Um, and I was encouraged to take more and more business classes as well. Um, so that really helped me to find that that career path. Um, so I think overall, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for FBLA PBL. Um, and I mean, it truly changed my life. And I'm still friends with every advisor that I had, my two high school ones and my my three college ones still still talking to them and and they still help provide and guide me as I enter my career and, and continue on in advance. So uh, I'd certainly say that's how FBLA has impacted my life. Of course, now you're serving as the Missouri FBLA PBL State Advisor, but I'm curious to know what was your dream job when you were a kid? So when I was very young, I wanted to go into art. Um, I wanted to be an art teacher. Uh, my mother was an educator uh, and I loved, I loved art. Um, and as I got older, um, I certainly think I found that business was where I, I had my strengths. Uh, and that came from being a member of FBLA and taking different business classes. Um, but I think I got to actually leverage my childhood dream a little bit um, in helping to figure out uh, what I wanted to do in a, as a career. Uh, I got to experience um, things like graphic design, things like marketing um, that are all very creative uh, fields. And I could kind of take that creativity aspect that I loved from art and transform that into a career in business. So I went on to get a, a bachelor's and a master's both in marketing. So how did you get to where you are today? And what did you do before becoming the Missouri FBLA PBL State Advisor? And do you have any steps that you'd like to pursue in the future? So I graduated um, from my bachelor's in 2014. 
Uh, and at that time, I actually moved to Chicago and I worked for the uh, Brookfield Zoo, uh, which is the second largest zoo in the country. Uh, and I, I thoroughly loved that experience, um, getting to live in a big city. Um, but when the time came that this role opened up was at a time that I was looking at coming back um, to Missouri, actually. Uh, and the predecessor before me uh, provided me a lot of opportunities to see FBLA PBL, especially at a Missouri level, uh, behind the scenes. Um, so that really helped me and uh, I was able to, um, to get this role here um, in Missouri and actually get to truly give back. Uh, for the seven years FBLA PBL gave to me, I now get to lead it uh, here in Missouri. Um, after my time here is done, I certainly want to stay in the nonprofit world. Um, I love getting to see the direct impact of what a role can do. Um, so I certainly want to stay somewhere in the nonprofit sector, but education's always been the, the thing that I really love going back to wanting to be an art teacher once upon a time as a little kid. Um, I really love working in education and helping to to build leaders and strengthen people's skills. So we'll see where, where life takes me, but I, I thoroughly love the opportunities I have here and I hope that I can continue to enjoy them for many years to come. As the Missouri FBLA PBL State Advisor, you're responsible for a majority of the magic that is created for our members year round. Would you be able to give your eager fans a quick behind the scenes summary of what your position entails on a day to day basis? My position is just about everything you could possibly imagine and then multiply that by a thousand. Um, on a daily basis, um, a lot of what I do is communicate with our local advisors. Um, I, I kind of serve as the individual who communicates with them on um, just about every topic from our competitive events to our conferences, uh, to leadership positions and opportunities, awards and recognition. All that information is really disseminated um, through the office here and through my role. Um, so that's probably the number one daily thing that happens. But along the way, uh, there's a lot of work that comes with the conferences. Um, so I'm responsible for 37 conferences that we put on here in Missouri, um, our largest being our state conference of just about 5,000 individuals. Um, so a lot of things that, that people don't necessarily realize kind of happen behind the scenes that I think I really love and I love having a business background to be able to do are the contract negotiations with um, our hotels. We have 27 partner properties for our state conference, uh, our contracts with our production companies. Um, so when FBLA members, PBL members go to conferences and they see all the lights and the sound and the music and the graphics, uh, all that's developed behind the scenes years in advance, uh, working with the production company. Uh, and that takes, takes a lot of time, but I think my absolute favorite thing is getting to work with our state officers. Uh, I actually serve st as state advisor. You actually serve as the lead advisor for those individuals who run for state office. Um, and then you assist with those students who are national officers as well, like you, Kimberly, who I've gotten to work with my entire time here uh, with uh, Missouri FBLA PBL. And I love getting to watch them grow and develop over time, um, providing them with different opportunities. Um, in fact, just yesterday, I had a really amazing opportunity uh, to go up to East High School, which is one of our urban schools in Kansas City. And I got to take a state officer up there and get to meet with their membership and help them work on their projects and inspire them um, to want to be leaders and to want to go to conferences and experience a world that's a lot bigger than that that they know. Um, so everything that, that I do goes back to the members, goes back to our advisors, um, but there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes um, every day here in the office, but that's a little snippet of what my eager fans want to know. So what is the most rewarding aspect of your position? So I'm going to go back to, to working with the state officers. I think, you know, I love planning the conferences. I love getting to see the work that students put into competitive events. And I love seeing, you know, the students up there on stage, but uh, there's nothing, I think, more important to me than getting to work with my state officers. Um, I have uh, 18 student officers and then three professional division officers every year. Uh, and getting to watch them grow and develop from the time they, they come to us to apply to be a state officer to the time that they leave. They transform and grow into amazing leaders. And I know that they'll all be so successful in their lives. And I love getting to catch up with them years down the road and see where they are and what they're doing and, and how they've they've grown and developed. My team that I ever had are all graduating from college this year. 
Um, so it's interesting to see how how they've been able to take their lives um, and and make them better and make the lives of other people better as well. So on the flip side of that, what would you say is the most challenging aspect of your position? I would say the most challenging aspect of my position is um, is probably the conference planning. Um, there's a lot that goes into conference planning that a lot of people don't necessarily realize. Um, I mean, every every minute detail that has to happen at a conference has to happen because we put it on a piece of paper, uh, especially for the hotel to do. Um, so all the way down to exactly where you want a uh, you know a name holder on a table and what color linen you want um, and what kind of potato you want. Um, I mean, every single element has to be spelled out clearly minute by minute for a conference to operate. Um, so I would say that's probably the most challenging part is just making sure that every single detail of our five-day conference is written down um, to ensure that the conference can operate successfully for our members. The final question I have for you is, what advice would you give to any FBLA PBL members who are seeking a career, but they're unsure of what they want to do or what steps they should take to find a career? Yes. Take every opportunity that you can to enjoy our competitive events program um, from middle level to FBLA to PBL. Uh, we have so many different competitions and they're in all different kinds of career fields. And I always say FBLA is a CTSO for everybody because no matter what you do, you're involved with business in some way. Um, even if you think you're just going to work in the nonprofit sector in a cube, um, it doesn't matter. Every single thing that you do is gonna be related back to business. So if you're not really sure what you wanna do, try everything. Maybe ag business is your forte. So try out our ag business test, or maybe you want to go into healthcare, try out our healthcare administration events, hospitality management, you know, you want to be an event planner as well. Try everything that you can. But I think my, my best words of wisdom when it comes with that is for most of our competitions, they're only a few minutes long. So let all of your inhibitions down, let your guard down, for a few minutes and give something your all. And what you might realize is when you cut the nerves out of that, uh, when you cut your fears of the future out of that, um, you'll find that you can be really, really successful in those events. So make sure that you just take every opportunity that's available to you, especially with competitions. And I guarantee that you can find a career just like I did wanting to be an art teacher and finding all the graphics and marketing and everything interesting to where I could use my creativity um, and find a career path out of it. Thank you so much, Chris, for taking some time out of your busy morning to share your life and some tips with our FBLA PBL members. I definitely appreciate it, and I know that members across the country do too. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I loved getting to, to share my story and my experience, and I hope that anybody who has ever wanted to be an officer or move into a role like mine, you know, take some of the advice that I've given and the stories I've given and uh, and finds a career path. So best of luck to, to all of our members and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Perfect. To all of the FBLA PBL members who are watching this interview series, thank you so much for supporting this new initiative and I hope that you find as much enjoyment in watching these videos as I do in uh, recording them for you. So until Baltimore NFL until NLC in Baltimore, I hope you do everything you can to elevate your future and best of luck with everything you're doing this year.